Hello, and welcome to Chaser.
Hello again, and after a particularly gripping introduction, we finally find ourselves in control of Chaser. Now at the moment there's not really much we can actually do since we don't have a weapon. All we can really do is kind of strafe around and jump and that sort of thing. Uh, but it gives us plenty of time to check out the Space Station Majestic, which we somehow have to find a way out of. And in a kind of telling hint at what sort of quality we can be looking forward to with Chaser, um, the mission goals mention a commando, uh, which is a little strange since there are definitely more than one commando running around on this station. Well, that's our cue to get a move on, and it gives us a chance to show off the extremely fast run speed that Chaser seems to have. And now up ahead we will meet our first enemy way off in the distance. Subject is not here. Area is secured. Of course we don't have a weapon so we can't actually attack him yet, but we'll hold off and just let him carry on ahead. It is possible to actually catch up with the guy, but that poses a bit of a problem since you're placed about halfway through the level and you have no weapons with which to defend yourself so you just get slaughtered by all the enemies. Don't touch that! It's a bomb! So for now we're just gonna keep out of sight and see where the level leads us. The red light means the door's locked. And the yellow light tells us that we can open that door. It's at this point that we get our first weapon. The more eagle-eyed of you may notice that there are actually three weapons lying on the ground and only two corpses. You can only assume that these two guys were running ahead to warn one other guy about this supposed bomb, but the corpse is nowhere to be found. Okay, that's enough. Drop it. Drop it now. Being in scope view gets us an automatic burst fire, as you can see. While out of scope is purely automatic fire. Here we can see one of the small armor pickups that will get you 25 armor. Both the health and armor can go up to a maximum of 100 each, and to be perfectly honest, there's really no difference between the two. Drop Sometimes the game can get very noisy. As with most FPSs of the time, we've got our standard full health pickup. is a very dialogue or event heavy game because it certainly is not. In fact I wouldn't be surprised if this was the very last level ever made given that it feels more like a chain of set pieces than any other level does. If you keep your eye at the bottom left during this firefight you'll get some indication of just how fragile Chaser seems to be. In fact, it's very difficult to judge just how much damage you're going to take at any particular instance of being hit. Uh, that's the primary reason why you'll be seeing me quick save an awful lot. This cargo bay area serves as a very good test case study in, in terms of game design. It's um, the first puzzle in Chaser, and although very simple, it's got one particular problem that um, a number of people seem to have not been able to get past. Hooking around in this side room proves to have uh, no exit uh, whatsoever, so um, a little bit of backtracking into the cargo bay area and you'll find a lift which you use to get up to the second floor, and here's where people meet the problem. 
Once we make our way up and clear out any remaining enemies, you'll notice an inconspicuous little blue light on the left hand side. That turns out to belong to a little computer panel, very similar to the ones we saw in the very first room of the level, although we can actually interact with this one. And I'm really not at all surprised that people might have had some trouble finding that panel, or at least realising that they had to do something with it. The little glowing light thing leaves a lot to be desired, as it's actually something that's harder to notice the closer you get to it. I'm running very low on health by this point, so, well, fortune favours the bold and I have to make a dash for that medkit. And here we see a little flaw in the game's engine. The AI use proximity to open doors, so they obviously get up quite close. And if you open the door at just the right time, you can kill them instantly. Of course, this also happens to you as well if they decide to open the door while you're standing right up next to it. I should point out is that the station itself appears to have no security whatsoever. All of the enemies that you fight are the commandos that boarded the station during the intro cutscene. And while this isn't exactly an issue of any kind, it is a reasonably important plot point later on in the game, and it's something that I always forget, so I felt I should at least bring it up. The presence of the commando seems to be taking its toll on the station. You can hear systems appearing to fail all over the place. Up ahead we have a new area in which we meet our first death of the game. And it um, gives, once again, another indication of just how easy it is to die. If you look carefully, you can see that I take about four hits in a row and it pretty much murders me. And the armor appears to make very little difference. I'll be removing all but the most unique of deaths from future videos, but for my own entertainment I'll be keeping a tally, which I'll show on screen of just how many times I've died during the course of the game. So often the game will surprise me with just how beautiful some things can be, given how dated the engine is. For example, the view outside of the window here. But it's the little touches like what happens when you shoot the window which really makes me appreciate the game more than really anyone has any right to. It just says to me that someone in the development team really cared about the game and it's something I can really appreciate. <laughs> Judging from all the locked doors, the only way to proceed is to head down these lifts, where we'll find a few more enemies to play cat and mouse with. I can see it. The AI in Chaser never really gives you the impression that they're particularly intelligent. Most of the time they'll just stand their ground. But I was a little surprised to see that this one moves around quite as much as he does. Pretty soon the level is back to what we had before with just following the yellow lights of open doors. At 
this point we've actually managed to double back to the start of the level um, above the area where we got our first weapon from the two corpses. In this room we've got a number of panels, it appears to be a control room of some sort, and you can interact with the panels themselves, but I have absolutely no idea what it does. Ultimately it seems to just be a way to tell you to get to the rescue pods. part of the area where the first commando that we saw wandered off to. And this is the door through which the first commando we saw left. These stairs just take us back up to the lift in the broken door that we were at before. Here is some more Chaser AI at its finest. I'm not sure what sort of tactical advantage that would give them. Another new area and another new puzzle of sorts. In the middle here we appear to have some sort of loading bay area where it, it would appear that ships poke themselves through a force field of some kind and unload all their goods. A brief slip shows us that we can't actually be damaged by the force field and it gives us a chance to have a look outside and see some of the cargo containers just floating around. Although since the station Majestic is constantly rotating, I'd expect those containers to have drifted off a long time ago. And it's quite obvious that the electrified door has to be our next destination, so we need to look around for a way to disable that electric field. strangely fanciful replacement for just a simple button, but uh, it's disabled the field and we can get on our way, and it also seems to have switched on a klaxon alarm, which will be persistent until we finish the level. my favourite part of the level. Um, it's just unfortunate that we don't really get to see this kind of engine effect at any other point in the game. Just a simple tilting corridor adds a lot to this particular level, especially since it's trying to convey the fact that the station is ripping itself apart somehow, and it certainly makes a break from the usual static level geometry that's found in almost every game. See Keep an eye on the commander at the far end of the corridor. It's worth noting that each of the panels flying off the wall would have been hand animated, since the engine offers nothing in the way of dynamic physics like havoc. And as a final challenge, we come across the most dangerous thing that Chaser can throw at you, a simple ladder. Here you can see just how easy it is to slip off, and it's something that happens more than it really needs to. And by the time I've reached the top, I'm being very, very careful about my dismount. 
As we reach the end of the level, I leave you with one of the most atmospheric cutscenes that I've seen in any game, and also with the question of where Chaser got his change of clothes and when he had time to change. Next time on Chaser. Never shoot me down.